The most storied rivalry in college hockey writes a new chapter tonight at TD Garden. For just the third time ever, the Hockey East title comes down to Boston College and Boston University. And tonight, they'll square off as the top two teams in the country. So glad you're with us, everybody, with Billy Jaffe. I'm Tyler Murray, George Belecci down at ice level. And, Billy, it's simply impossible to overhype this game. A lot of folks think this is a national championship preview, but an extra layer of intrigue. you got a marquee showdown between Macklin Celebrini for BU and Cutter Gauthier for BC. I mean, you could argue the two best centers in the country. I know there's some other great ones, but these two guys, phenomenal. Special players, albeit they go about things a little differently. In these matchups, you can't beat them. And a lot of teams can't beat Boston College, number one in the nation. And they've been doing it lately without maybe their best player. But Gabe Perot is back for game one today. Yeah, isn't that kind of scary? Hey, everybody, with Billy Jaffe, I'm Tyler Murray. we got George Belecki down at ice level. And, Billy, we've seen dozens of NHL prospects this weekend already. But nobody's getting more headlines than Boston University's Macklin Celebrini. And rightfully so. Peterson's alone at the blue line. He'll get it to him. Here comes Dylan Peterson. the rush again. Tape to tape for Smith and he scores! <laughs> Loose in front, Quinn Hudson over to Green. Oh, a save by Fowler! Ridiculous! Green all the way through. And the McCarthy scores! Down to Fortescue. Keep it moving for Leonard. He scores! Ryan Leonard starts the party at County Forum. Any further fouls on Vermont? It's going to be a one and one for UNH. Baker gets an open look for three, and he knocks it down. 2.4 to go. Anderson looking for the inbound. No timeouts. Over the top. Leaping grab. Gray. Blocked by Daniels. Wildcats win. Erasme on the move. Kick out. Woodyard three. In and out. Daniels gets the tip rebound and slams it home. Erasme kept that alive. Pick and pop. Jackson Baker. Got it. Clarence Daniels showing some post moves and nearly going. And a turnaround jumper for two. Late game execution as Daniels gets an open look. And he gets a roll. 1-0. <laughs> Deep drive. Right field. Back to the wall. It's off the fence. And Tristan Casas walks it off for Worcester. First pitch. Breaking ball. Line to center. Here comes Casas. The Woo Sox do it again. Four base runners already for the Woo Sox, but no runs yet. Until now. This one's ripped into deep left field. Kyle Stowers looks up. It's gone. Yu Chang, a three-run bomb. And the Woo Sox strike first. 0-2 to Hill. Swing and a looper to shallow left. Abreu got a late break, but Rafael is right on time. 2-1 is launched to right. This one's deep. Back to the wall. We are tied. 2-0 pitch, line to left, Granberg coming on, diving for it, oh, he got it! Devlin Granberg! It's the first no-hitter in Wu Sox history! The two best teams in college hockey are the two biggest rivals in college hockey. And a matchup like this really draws a crowd. For the very first time, it's number one Boston University against number two Boston College, live in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Drop the puck, ring the bell. Round one of this heavyweight bout is underway, and the Eagles win the opening faceoff. Watch out for Boston College early. Their last two home games, they've scored a goal exactly 35 seconds in. Oscar Yelvik and Hayden Hershock doing the damage on the opening shift. This is Andre Gasso, the Bruins draft pick behind the cage. He's watched by Macklin Celebrini. Shakes loose of him. Powell sends it on. Big save. Caron to start the action. And Quinn Hudson sets up Celebrini on the break. He'll flip it ahead to Luke Tuck. Dragged ahead along the wall. Stopped by Eamon Powell. And a bang it around behind to Drew Fortescue. Who picked it off. Good jump there by BC. First shift. Get in. Start generating chances right away. But BU, they get the puck out. They get it down ice. You're going to see a lot of going back and forth this this game, I think, especially early on. 
Ace McCarthy to center for Jack Hughes. will tip that one down deep. Aram Manetti in, gets it behind for Hershuk. That one slides free, picked off by McCarthy. Pass inside to Devin Kaplan. He took a bump from Hershuk. Now Ryan Green, the Blackhawks second rounder, played it off the corner boards. Kaplan got it to Green. Looking middle, no, keeping himself behind the cage. Manetti and meets him, will slide it out to Cade Weber, the tallest skater in the country. At six foot seven, down low to Kaplan, that one night free. It's available in the corner. And batted right back to Kaplan, who took a shot on Fowler, and it missed wide. Might have got a piece of it. McCarthy to dump it all the way around, and Manedian can chase it down. Be a good, good response shift right there. You're trying to get a little bit of pressure. I love Kaplan getting behind the net, a little change of pace move there. That's what this is all about is how do you find little edges in this game? These are two really qualified offensive teams. They are both red hot, as you might imagine. Boston College has won 9 of 11. The losses to Northeastern and Providence just barely nudged them out of the top spot. BU has taken over the national number one because they've won seven in a row. Here come Dylan Peterson. Centering feet. Big save made by Fowler. Point blank chance for Zabinay, but he couldn't bury it. Fantastic. Fantastic save there, but what a great look to get the puck to Zabinay in a position. You basically have a three on two down low, and you find the best shooting position right there. Great save there by Fowler. Fowler, the Canadians' third round pick last summer. 92% save percentage. That's top 10 in the nation right now. And we'll take another look. Nick Zabinay, he's playing center with the third line tonight, moving him around a little bit. Had a real nice chance here on Fowler. Yeah, it's a turnover right there at the blue line, and then the movement. Peterson looks, there's two players he has to go to. You also end up with Wilmer in a good shooting position, but Z Zabinay coming right down the center, and a great right pad save there by Jacob Fowler. After Spencer Knight went pro three years ago, BC went the grad transfer route. Eric Zopp of Bowling Green, Mitch Benson of Colgate, and they got a homegrown stud in net, Jacob Fowler. Lane to Quinn Hudson, they can't connect. Comes loose, right in front, Celebrini tried to set up Hudson, but a good stick from Jakob Benston broke up the great A chance. Hudson now into a crowd. Behind the net, green center, Celebrini snaps one on goal. But Fowler able to make the stop. Jakob Benston, a good stick. You're seeing some good opportunities, though, for BU. Yeah, just moving the puck around here. They're getting some into some of the quiet areas. A nice play there defensively right there by Bankston to just make sure that he gets a stick on that puck, doesn't allow that wide open net. But you're looking at both teams here have come out. They have some good offensive chances. I like the way both defenses and both goaltenders have responded. You got a fourth line matchup here. And for BU, that means some big bodies. You've got the 6-1 Stevens, the 6-3 Grimes, and the 6-5 Shane Lachance. He's Jack Parker's grandson. Parker, of course, coached the Terriers for 40 years, won three national championships. As that one skids through, it's Posma to set up Connor Joyce, and he can bang this one out. Trouble in transition. That one pushed down deep by Posma as the hitting picks up a bit. This is year two of the Greg Brown and Jay Pandolfo era. First time they faced off was here at Connie Forum last season. Final score, 9-6, Boston College, so hang on. Here's Posma to work his way in. Block shot from Cade Weber. He leads the country with three block shots per game. I feel like we're supposed to feel confident there hasn't been a goal yet. We're not, <laughs> maybe, maybe not in for 15 tonight. I know Greg Brown kind of laughed about it and said, this is not, the, that is not the type of game any coach wants to be involved in. Well, the fans love it. You're right, Phil. The coaching staffs do not. Gasso will touch that one through for Cutter Gauthier. Motors up the left wing, shakes a defender, spins it to the middle, came right back to him from Yelvik, and a tough angle shot had to be saved by Koran. Ready off the end boards. Kaplan read that one well, but gave it right back to Andre Gasso, one of two Bruins draft picks on this top Eagles line. The stick work from Kaplan, poked ahead to Hughes. Jack Hughes drags it toward the circle. Green in the middle, that one off the pads of Fowler, and it comes out to Green. Evan McCarthy forced a tough save. Now it's Jack Hughes back out high. This is Aiden Celebrini, Macklin's older brother. Tipped it toward the circle off the end boards. Charlie Letty dragged it away from Kaplan. And now Gavin McCarthy will dump it in. You're hearing some familiar last names. Three sets of brothers for this Terrier team. Aiden and Macklin Celebrini, Quinn and Lane Hudson, and Gavin and Case McCarthy. Eagles have uh, Connor and Nolan Joyce. Nolan has the night off. Last year they had Eamon and Seamus Powell, but... Seamus is back in the USHL after a year with the Eagles. 
and not a direct correlation, but you also have Luke Tuck, brother of former Eagle, Alex Tuck, which you could confuse that very easily as well. Here comes the freshman line, poked ahead to Perot, couldn't get it to him. Celebrini got the stick in the way. Good idea from Will Smith. Second line for the Eagles. They played together for multiple years, whether it's in the USHL with the Team USA Development Program, whether it's here at BC, or they were three of the seven Eagles to win gold in World Juniors. We're talking with uh, Jay Pandolfo yesterday, talked about gap control. He knows there's always going to be an extra pass by this line. They find each other when the play doesn't look like it's right there in front of them. Brian Leonard had a good look at it. Here's Luke Tuck on the move, missed it short side. It'll come all the way around. Ambrosio can tip it ahead to Smith. And he'll stash that one high for a line change, but he tested Karan's glove just in case. Celebrini didn't get all of that pass, and time for Eamon Powell to take a breather. Get it over to Drew Fortescue, Rangers draft pick. General manager Chris Drury, of course, a Terrier legend. He's the GM of the Rangers. He traded up to get Drew Fortescue last summer. That one tipped toward Karan, made a nice save on the Ambrosio redirection. Celebrini out to center. Luke Tuck triggering Quinn Hudson free. Lane jumps into the rush, couldn't get it to him. Pinballed around and the arm is up for a penalty as that one eludes the target, down for an icing. And let's see what we have. It's going to be on the Terriers across the check. No, I'm sorry, it's, that's on the Eagles. The, the whistle did not blow right away. It's on the old Terrier, Jim, Jamie Armstrong. It is on Jamie Armstrong. So BU will get the first power play of this game right there from behind. Kind of crystal clear type of cross check and this BU power play, man, they move, when they move the puck well, they can be so dangerous. And that is what Jay Pandolfo talks about, wanting to create the chaos. Quick movement, quick shots off the pass, ready for puck retrieval, getting rebounds. Near the faceoff dot, it's Lachance, Quinn Hudson, and Green. But back by the blue line is where they really make it happen. Lane Hudson and Macklin Celebrini, you're not going to find a better combination on the power play anywhere in the country. No, and that's what makes this unit so so difficult to defend, the fact that they have basically five great shooters all the way top to bottom as we get an offside there. Getting physical here. While we have a minute, let's send it down to Laura Stickles. Team, so no surprise, both coaches had very similar keys to the game. Both BU head coach Jay Pandolfo and BC head coach Craig Brown said puck management would be critical. Both teams will make you pay if you turn the puck over in the neutral zone. Quick reload, that's another focus for both teams. Otherwise, this will turn into a track meet. And then lastly, both coaches are looking for grittier goals. Breakaways and power plays will only get you so far in the second half. Guys. Thank you, Laurie. Yeah, Jim, I was surprised to hear how neither coach really seems satisfied with how their teams were playing this year. They have identical 16-4-1 records. They're, of course, the top two teams in the country, but the standard has been set even higher, it would seem, for both BU and BC. And there's room for improvement. Both, both clubs, they're both playing very well, but you know you can't turn an on-off switch on all the time. One-timer, Quinn Hudson got handcuffed on it. Manedian got a stick in there. A minute 13 to go on the power play. Cross check on the BU transfer, Jamie Armstrong, and a giveaway. Here's Oscar Ielvi. Cuts to the middle, Lane Hudson seals him off, and there's some room for Celebrini to curl in front of his net. Eklund Celebrini, the youngest player in college hockey. Some people think he still might be the best player in college hockey. Not going to turn 18 until June, just in time for this summer's NHL draft. Here he is, one timer, safe foul, rebound, stopped as well. Two big saves with that right pad from Jacob Fowler. And the second one, a little accidental the way it gets back on net, but he needed as much push with the right pad there Fowler did to keep that out of the net. Some of his best work this year has come on the penalty field. Recently had a 12-game run where his PK save percentage was 96 and a half. Kaplan at the circle. Hammered that one wide. It'll come out to Tuck. Setting up Willander. Devin Kaplan again at the circle. Second power play it out there for BU. Time winding down to the penalty. Wilmer had it rejected right back to him. Will Lander, the first round pick of the Canucks, kept it in. His shot knocked down. Popped back out to the top of the circle. And we're back to five on five. Jack Hughes got a tip from Tuck. And it comes loose to Manedian. Penalty is killed. 
BC has one of the best PKs in the country as that one spins toward Karan. Only eight power play goals allowed all year, but they're hitting a bit of a speed bump. Half of those eight goals have been allowed in their last five games on the power play, but they look dialed in today. Here comes Will Smith. Posting up, chipped it over. Lucas Dustinson has some room. There's Smith, slides it toward goal. Karan made the first stop, poked at by Perot, and they wave it off and blow the whistle. 11:31. We'll take a breather. BU with some chances on that power play, but the Eagles' PK holds strong. We're just getting underway. Number one BU versus number two BC.